Jason Rasidlo reporting from the Ford Conference and Events Center in Dearborn for the Driving Chains Conference. Stay tuned for remarks from panelists in the session titled The Next Employers. Thank you, thank you so much. Great to be here. I actually don't have a PowerPoint, so although I was thinking about messing with the technical people and telling them I did, but <laughs> decided not to do that. Um, it was actually really kind of neat driving up here. I drove past the powertrain operations and engineering building, which is where I first worked at Ford. And listening to the presentations and then talk about manufacturing brought back memories when I was the nighttime labor rep for the Michigan truck plant. So really automotive is such a key industry for Michigan and I was involved with that for about five years before going out to California. And coming back in 2004, life was definitely different in Michigan. But what I want to talk to you a little bit mostly about is a program that we developed at Ann Arbor Spark called Shifting Gears and that we are launching statewide. I'll talk a little bit about the history of the program, what it does, who it benefits, and as of today we finalized some of the plans for our launch and I can share give you a sneak peek on what's coming up. So this is a program that happened. So I was an economic developer for Ann Arbor Spark and Ann Arbor as a region generally does better than Michigan as a whole. And in 2006 when I joined Spark, the automotive industry was definitely on, on declining, and that was well known. But in Ann Arbor in particular, we lost our largest private employer, Pfizer, when they decided to close up a 2,000-person manufacturing facility, or R&D, as well as a little bit of manufacturing. Uh, this led to a number of discussions with our board, and one of our co-founders was a gentleman formerly known as Rick Snyder. We, it was and who you may know it was a venture capitalist and involved with a number of small company formations. So we were sitting around and he had had the idea of really creating a talent enhancement function and on Number Spark, recognizing the need to that talent has on business formation and growth. One of his experiences with small companies, and the example he used was you would always want to hire a salesperson from IBM, but not right after they left. You wanted them kind of deprogrammed from that big company experience. You wanted them to bounce, to fail, to learn, and then you wanted to hire them. And so as we were having some conversations around his vision for the needs of the area, it was quite apparent that there was going to be a lot of big company talent available. And these are highly skilled, highly successful people that we didn't want to leave Michigan. But the future jobs that were coming online were not with large companies. They were with small, innovative, growing companies. So how do you transition successful engineering and managerial talent into these growing opportunities? So with the great help of a number of key partners and organizations, we created a program, really a four-month developmental program, that included looking at the key qualities that make people, that help people become successful in entrepreneurial environments. And how can we really create a program that isn't just going to be go to a training class and read this and then you're done, but how do we address all the needs of helping a workforce transition? So the program starts with, an, so we first identified, we had some study groups that were done uh, looking at employers as well as talent that was in the market that was trying to make a transition and looking at people who were most successful at it, what were some of the key qualities and attributes that they had. In these other presentations, you saw lots of lists of hard skills and soft, I mean, professional skills that are needed for, to help people make transitions. But some of the attributes that we were really looking at weren't necessarily the technical skills, but some of the behaviors, such as how do people tolerate ambiguity? In a small company, you don't have a research department making decisions, you know, giving you a lot of data. You have to make very quick decisions based on the complete information. You need to be able to understand and lead change through some of these difficult decisions. You need to be very self-aware. You need to have great self-confidence. You, uh, emotional intelligence uh, goes without saying. Uh, you also need to have a very strong inward locus of control. So that meant if something bad happened, did you blame yourself? Did you look inside yourself and say, what could I do differently? Or did you blame someone else? I was like, oh, well, the, you know, the competitor did it, or that was, you know, that it was somebody else's fault. Uh, to really do well in a small company, entrepreneurial environment, you really need to be able to take responsibility and understand that you can make a difference on making some of these changes. 
And again, decision making and having kind of situational leadership so you would know where to, when to be more autocratic and more collaborative were also aspects that we looked at. So we created an assessment. So people going into this program would take an assessment and then they would get counseling based on their own individual customized profile about some of these qualities that they would have. So they would really have a good idea of what attributes they might need to work on during this four-month development program or what were, were our strengths. We would match them up with a mentor, somebody that was already in a small company, had a lot of connections to small companies, not only to provide individual feedback about goals and what their resume looked like, but also to make some introductions. And I'm waving to Vince right now, because he was one of our most recent graduates of the program. Uh, we also then had about 40 hours of executive education, including a business simulation, where the cohort would go through the, the, like a three-day program that was actually developed by Visteon to make their culture more entrepreneurial, to help managers and leaders understand the cross-functioning cross of how departments work together and how decisions are made. Um, after this, you know, per, this, these, uh, this program is not done every day. It was usually done on the weekend, so it'd be like a Friday and a Saturday, uh, about every other week for about six weeks. So that was the first, that was another piece of it. Was the, so the executive education. But after that, everyone going through this program did an 80-hour pro bono internship with a startup. And the idea wasn't to eventually place people in a startup, but the way, because we, we you know people coming through this program were usually making you know, mid to high six-figure salaries. They were at a stage in their life where they might have kids going into college soon. Uh, we didn't expect these folks to you know, end up in a garage somewhere inventing a product with an early stage startup, but we wanted them to join companies that might have been a startup five or ten years ago. But we wanted to expose them to that type of environment, that chaotic craziness where you're trying to really understand the business case, understand the market, and make decisions. And as well as, this was a great opportunity for startups to get access to talent and to get work done that they had no access to. Oftentimes these were pre-funded startups, so any help that they were getting was going to be volunteer. And for them to get access to some of these people at MBAs and PhDs and great industry connections and experiences was critical to help the startups. After they finished this internship, all lo and behold, their resume really reflected some new experiences. Now, is somebody our first, and then this would really help them transition into mock interviews and networking lunches, where we would, we would introduce them to second stage companies that were growing and expanding. And the way some of the frustration or some of the feedback that we got some from from some of the companies initially was, you know, I know you've got a lot of automotive people. I don't want any more automotive people because they're not successful. They failed at my companies. After meeting and interviewing and hiring some of these people that came out of this from automotive, they really changed their tunes. The program was very successful, and to talk a little.